in the sacred cathedral. Church solemnly celebrates the greatest mysteries of our redemption, keeping by the means of special celebrations the memorial of our Lord crucified, buried, and raised. The Paschal feast should also be kept sacred. It is also to be celebrated everywhere on the Friday of the Lord's Passion and where appropriate prolonged also through Saturday as a way of coming with the Holy Spirit uplifted to the joys of the Lord's Resurrection. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we have gathered here to celebrate the Lord's Last Supper. This celebration has three main significance. First, the institution of the Holy Eucharist in which our Lord called his disciples to have a share of Passover meal. Second, the washing of the feet of disciples by the Lord Jesus Christ symbolized his humility and love for his disciples. The institution of the priesthood is the of continuation of the act of love and the act of sacrifice for others. Therefore, in today's celebration, we have mixed feelings of joys and sorrows because of Eucharist and priesthood led him to give himself for entire humanity. Therefore, in today's liturgy has divided into four parts. The first part, the beginning from the entrance theme and it continues till the liturgy of the world. The second part, washing of the feet. The third, the liturgy of the Eucharist. And the fourth, the blessed sacrament, procession and adoration. So let us begin our first part of the liturgy now. Therefore, may I invite all of you to rise for the entrance theme.
evening, brothers and sisters. Tonight, we begin the Easter video. We are entering into the most important days of our liturgical calendar. We enter into this Paschal mystery with a note of joy. And we will conclude this journey of three days with a note of joy. But in between, we enter into the passion of Christ. And this three days reminds us that through suffering, we will rise again. We will enter into the eternal joy. We will enter into the past of joy. Knowing that, understanding this mystery, trying to understand this mystery, we come around this altar. Let us prepare ourselves for this mystery by recalling our own faults and failures, asking God's pardon and strength.
and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He came to Simon Peter, and, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not know now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That was, that was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I, am, I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Happy feast to everyone. Happy, Happy feast, 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 Father. Tonight we commemorate the last meal of Jesus. The last meal of Jesus with his disciples. For Jesus and his disciples, they always had time together and they had the meal together. And I would guess that would have been a, a a pleasure of an enjoying moment for the disciples with Jesus. And I was uh, thinking about the, the meal together, how it could have been with Jesus and his disciples. The past few days after this uh, lockdown, we had more time together and we had more time for our meals. And this meal, this community meal, which brought us together is also expression of camaraderie and that's the time we had a lot of conversation, discussion, sharing and remembering some past and also there were times we were challenged. A meal was not just eating together, it had different dimensions, multi-dimensional time of our community. And I see lots of joy and laughing during our community meal these days. And it would have been like that that Jesus and his disciples. But what today we recall and remember is the Last Supper. This Last Supper, there was something that Jesus did unusual on the Last Supper. I would see the uh, outstanding things that he did and that was taking the bread and breaking and giving to his disciples which he did every meal I think but the unusual thing is he said this is my body and as they were uh, eating then 
he suddenly got up and he got a jug of water and the basin, started washing the feet of his disciples. Unusual. And the third thing, he had been preaching, teaching all this past, past three years, but at that moment, knowing that that's the last meal, he gives the commandment. He had taught so many things to his disciples, but he gave the final, the commandment, I would say, the commandment of love. And that is what we are celebrating tonight. As we heard in the introduction, today we celebrate these three things. Institution of Eucharist, the cause of the institution of Eucharist, it automatically follows the institution of priesthood. And the third, the commandment of love. And I would like to see these three in parallel with three other things. The three sets of three things. Okay, the first set is the triple role or the triple role of Jesus or threefold mission of Christ. I mean, you all know that. You know, kingly, priestly and prophetic. So, through our baptism, we share in this mission of Christ. If you remember, in your classes you might have learned, in baptism we are anointed, anointed to participate in this threefold mission of Jesus. So we are all kings, we are all prophets, and we are all priests. Of course, we are ordained ministerial, we share in the ministerial priest of Christ, and you share the uh, common priesthood of Jesus. And that is our identity. In baptism, we receive this identity, identity of participating in this threefold mission of Christ. There was uh, a time that some flights were cancelled and the passengers were got annoyed, disturbed, and they all tried to reschedule their uh, uh, flights. As they were trying, there was one man who came and he said to the desk, at the person at the desk said, please take care of my ticket first. And she said, excuse me sir, I'm taking, I mean, I'm taking care of the passengers, those who came first. Let me finish and I will come back to you. And he said, he was so upset and he said, do you know who I am? He's trying to prove himself. Uh, this person at the desk, took the microphone and he uh, started uh, announcing your attention passengers there is a man here who doesn't know who he is if anyone knows please come to the desk immediately there was, uh, the man realized what he did was not appropriate he was trying to prove who he was our identity doesn't come from proving ourselves our identity as Catholics, as religious, as a priest, comes from our baptism, comes from our Lord Jesus. So when you think of the kingly role as a king, um, I would say that we celebrate today in the institution of Eucharist. Eucharist. In Eucharist, Jesus, Jesus' majesty is revealed. He is king. And in priesthood, which he gave to us, it's not for our power. The priesthood is the symbol of service. And finally, commandment of love is more of relational. So for the theology, as I would say, the kingly is about theology, priestly is about pastoral, and the prophet is about the relation and going further these three can be put in three hedges head hands and heart so the institution of Eucharist we have to uh, use our sense of reason to understand the kingly role of Christ understanding means 
we won't be able to understand completely the mystery of Eucharist, but trying to reasoning out to deepen our faith. And the second hand, our priesthood, the pastoral call. It's not about sitting and theologizing, but sitting and asking others to do things, rather using our hands to serve people. And these two will happen only when our heart is in union with head and hand. So today, as we celebrate tonight, the three great things that are, that are given to us, I would say the church, the birth of church, we say is on Pentecost. We say the birthday of the church is on Pentecost. It has already conceived on Monday, Thursday, today. The conception of the church happened in the institution of the Eucharist and the priesthood and the commandment of love. As you prepare yourself for priesthood, as Catholics, we are all called to this threefold mission of Christ. We get our identity from these three missions of Christ. As we enter into this trinum, let us ask ourselves, how am I really fulfilling this call of the threefold mission of Christ? Amen.
It gives inspiration for our prayers and spiritual life. It invites us to enter into communion with Him and our faith is strengthening through the Word of God. Lord, receive this gift. Bread and wine. Loving Jesus, as we offer this bread and wine to be transformed into your body and blood, may who celebrate this Eucharist become your true followers. Lord, bless the whole church, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, clergy, everywhere, so that all may live a life of committed and draw inspiration from the celebration of the Eucharist. Lord, accept this gift.
to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, this holy and unblemished sacrifice. Firstly, for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant us. Let us 
resurrection from the dead. And the Son of God, be your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This holy victim, this mortal victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the Father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, the holy sacrifice as spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who, gave God, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admitters, we beseech you into their company, not waiting our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him and with him, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Holy who takes away the sin, bless the Son of God. 